It is customary, when speaking of the apocalypse, to end on a happy note. And I can't really do that, but I'll do the best I can. So I'd like to read two short things. One of them is the most beautiful thing I've ever written, and I didn't actually write it. Um, it was written by a stream near my home, by which I don't mean I, by which I don't mean I wrote it by a stream. I mean that the stream wrote it, and I just hand wrote it up. And how that happened was I was trying to write about what it's like to be a river. And I tried writing this for several days. I wasn't getting anywhere. And then I realized it's really stupid for me to try to write what it's like to be, be a river. But I can just ask the stream near my home. That'd be like me trying to write about what it's like to be a woman. And I can just ask you. And so I went down to the stream. And I said, what's it like to be you? And the stream told me the answer just like that. And I realized in that moment that that question, what is it like to be you, is the fundamental question in any relationship. And I realized also that no one, no family member, no friend, no lover, has ever asked me that question. And I have never asked anyone, no family member, no friend, no lover, I never asked anyone that question. So I asked the stream, and the stream told me the answer immediately. And I went running back to my house to, uh, to, to write it down. As I'm running through the forest, the forest is going, uh, excuse me, uh, what's it like to be me? Um, so I get there, and I, and I, I write it down, and this is, this is what the stream in the forest said. Pretend you're a river. Pretend you're the mist who falls so fine, so gentle, that nothing separates water and air. You're the rain who falls in sheets, explodes onto the ground to the epochs and puddles. You're the ground who receives this water, soaking it up, taking it and carrying it deep inside. You're the cracks and fissures where the waters accumulate, flow, fall to join more water and more, in pools and rivers and move slowly through cavities, crevices. Pours. Hear the sounds and silence of water seeping or staying still. Hear the meaning of wet and dry. The union of liquid and solid, where solids dissolve and liquid solidify. Hear the pressure that pushes water through seams. Hear the rushing water that bubbles from the earth. You're a tiny pool between rocks. You overflow, find your way to join others who, like you, are moving, moving. You're the air at the surface of the water, the joining of substantial and insubstantial, the union of under and over, weight and not weight. You're the ripple, the rapid, the tiny waterfall that turns water to air and air to water. You are the mist of cells on the soil. You're the plants who drink the mist, and you're the sun who warms and feeds them. You're the fish who feed on insects, who feed on plants, who feed on soils, who feed on fish. You're the fish who become soils, who become plants, who become insects, who become fish who flow down the river. <coughs> you are the river who joins other rivers to become a new river, who's all the rivers and something else. You are the river. You do not stop at the banks where liquid turns to solid. You reach into the sky and into the soil. Water moves through rocks, comes up to form pools far from the vast flow where the rivers move together, seeps down to join still waters deep below the surface, waters who sleep and wake and sleep and mingle with the stones who are the river too. You are the river, who's married to the mountains you've known since they were young, who have given themselves to you as you've given yourself to them. You are the canyons you nestled into, each year deeper than the year before. You are the forest who give you their fallen trees, and the meadows you flood and feed and who feed you back the fruits and fine insects who fly to your surface to be taken in by the fish who with their own bodies again feed the meadows. You are the river who feeds the ocean, who feels the tides pushing and pulling against your mouth, the waves mixed with fresh and salt. You are that intermingling. That's who you are. That's who you've always been. You are the river. You live with volcanoes and glaciers. You've been dammed by lava and ice. You carry log jams so large and so old they grow their own forest with you running beneath. You live through droughts and floods. You are the river. You miss the salmon. You miss the sturgeon. You miss the ocean. You miss the meadows. You miss the forest. You miss the beavers and otters and grizzly bears. You miss the human beings. You are the river. You want them back. You want to feel the tickling of the sturgeon and thrusting of the salmon. You want to carry food and soil to the ocean. You want to cover the meadows as you used to. And you want to give yourself to them. And you want them to give themselves to you as you've done forever as they have too. Now, I think you're a forest. You're the bark of trees and the hairy moss that hangs from them. You're the duff that becomes soil, that becomes trees, that becomes seeds, that becomes schools, that becomes houses, that becomes slugs, that becomes shrews, that becomes soil. You're the trees that cannot live without the fungi, that cannot live without the wolves, that cannot live without the trees. You're the fire that cannot live without the trees, that cannot live without the woodpeckers, that cannot live without the beetles, that cannot live without the fire. You're the wind who speaks to the trees, and the trees who speak to the wind. You're the birds who sing, and the birds who do not. You are the salamanders, the ferns, the millipedes, the bumblebees who sleep on flowers, waiting for the morning to warm you up so you can eat and fly home. 
You two will go through ground and flood on the cold. And you two miss the salmon. You miss the owls, the grizzly bears. You miss the rivers. You miss the human beings. You want them all back. You need them back or you will die. And the very last thing that I want to talk about extremely briefly is a tradition of the Cheyenne dog soldiers called the picket, pin, and stake. Before a battle, a few of the bravest Cheyenne dog soldiers will be chosen to wear sashes of tan skins called dog ropes. Attached to each dog rope is a picket pin, normally used to tether horses. During battle, the pin would be driven into the ground as a mark of resolve. Once the pin was driven, the dog soldier would remain staked to that piece of ground, even to his death. Retreat was no longer an option. The pin could only be removed when everyone was again safe, or another dog soldier relieved him of his duty. It is time. I have driven my picket pin. I am staked out and willing to give in no more. Where will you drive your own picket stake? Where will you choose to make your stand? Give me a threshold, a specific point at which you finally stop running, at which you finally fight back. Stand with me. Stand and fight. I am one. We will be two. Two more might join, we will be four. When four more join, we will be eight. And we'll be eight, feet of, eight people fighting, the mothers will join. And then more people are more. Stand and fight. The questions before each of us now are, what are your gifts, and how can you use them in the service of your land base? What can you do? What does your land base most need from you? How can you achieve it? What do you want to do? And right now, perhaps the most important of all, what are you willing to do? People ask me all the time, Derek, what do you want us to do with all this information, all this analysis? And I always say, I don't want you to listen to me, because I don't live here, and I don't know how to live sustainably. I don't know how to live here. What's the nearest river? I'm sorry? So, if you want to know how to live sustainably, ask the Spoon River. It has been here for a long time. Ask the soil. It has been here for a long time. <coughs> if you ask them, they will tell you how to live sustainably, and they will tell you what they need, and they will tell you what to do. And then really the only question is, are you willing to do it? So thank you very much.